I am totally stunned. I'll go through all of today's Tesla stock news, but you gotta see this. I know Dan O'Dowd is trying to destroy Tesla, but he's actually really helping Tesla out here. Everyone, please do me a big favor and note how this is an ad. So he's spending money to promote this. Tell every Tesla owner, you know, to try the free one month trial of FSD. Repost this message so we can get everyone to learn the truth about FSD and how much progress it has made. This is wonderful. I'm really happy about this. I guarantee you that that ad just sold more Teslas for Tesla. Or at worst, more FSD subscriptions. That ad got 1 million views already. And this Tesla bear is spending money on it. I thought that maybe he's a smart guy, but just extremely disingenuous. But now I'm starting to think he's not that bright. Here's what happens when you let people try FSD. Three old ladies <laughs> were trying to, uh, we're not trying. We're, we doing, are, we're not doing we anything. We're being driven. I don't even have to look. <laughs> Do you have to? And we're not on a little simple neighborhood road, mind you. So we're pretty liking it. Elon Musk is making a move. He is rumored to visit India this month to meet the prime minister and is expected to make an announcement on plans to invest and open a new factory in the country. Now, I'm a bit skeptical about the rumor because we had a very similar rumor in January and nothing happened. But... Clearly, there's something going on. I think this time, it's likely to be correct that Elon Musk is indeed going to go to India because we learned that Tesla is actually going to make some vehicles for the market in India. Therefore, this rumor definitely makes sense. It's just, is it going to be this time or is it going to be a bit later? Likely, it's about to happen. Hey, it's Matt from the feature. I finished the video, I checked the latest news, and there's an official statement from Elon Musk now looking forward to meeting the Prime Minister of India. But the factory part is just pure speculation for now. However, last week we heard that Tesla was planning to bring a scouting team to find a factory location in the country. The visit is supposed to happen on April 22nd. But hold on, isn't the earnings call on April 23rd? Wouldn't that make it really difficult for Elon Musk to make it to the earnings call? Maybe, but we know that Elon has internet on the private plane that he has because of Starlink. So he can actually be on a plane flying back to the US and still attend the earnings call without issues. There's also a possibility that Elon Musk may not be on the call at all, but I think that's extremely unlikely because it was a very important quarter. And if Elon Musk is not on the call, I think the stock would drop. Unless there was a very good reason for not being on the call. Anyway, in the latest Elon Musk interview with the Norwegian fund manager. When asked about Tesla's plans for India this week, Musk said that it is a natural progression for Tesla to enter the Indian auto market. So of course that is definitely happening. Overall, Tesla entering the Indian market, I think is good news for us Tesla stock investors. We got some good news here. Tesla leads with unmatched brand loyalty in the US. We expect this, but it's good to see it confirmed. A study from Bloomberg Intelligence says that Tesla's brand loyalty is unparalleled, boasting an impressive 87 percent brand retention rate. I think that's higher than the last time I saw the number, uh, but also different surveys, different sources will give you slightly different numbers, but 87%, that's wow. Wow. Tesla's brand retention rate surpasses the average mark of other auto brands in a study by nearly a factor of two. And this is what a lot of people don't understand right now. 81% of Tesla's buyers are new buyers. So by the time a lot of these people need to upgrade Tesla, will at one point have more people returning to the Tesla brand than coming to the Tesla brand for the first time. In other words, also, all of the Tesla vehicles out there are pretty new vehicles, but at some point they will get old and at some point, a lot of these people will want to get a new vehicle. And at that point, even if Tesla does not grow its volumes by a lot up until then, after these people start to return to the Tesla brand, not only will we have a lot of new customers coming to the Tesla brand for the first time still, because it's naturally the best option for a new vehicle buyer, but also you will have a flood of people returning to the brand 
increasing these delivery volumes. We know that Lexuses and Toyotas are extremely reliable and that's one big reason why people return to these brands and Teslas are just as reliable. And over time, reliability will only improve. So not only do you get performance, you also get reliability and the luxury and the tech. I think it's important to note that only 1000 people participated in the study, but we have seen similar surveys before and this only further confirms the pre previous findings. Oh, a new FSD version is coming out, v12.3.4. And remember this, three significant improvements to FSD will roll out roughly every two weeks, should be really shining bright by late April or early May. So I'm expecting some new updates, good ones. This might be another great update. And because Tesla is no longer compete constrained, I expect a lot more of these updates. Today, we are having a bit of a wide stock market crash in the US with the uh, Fed rate cuts now pushed back to September and two at best in 2024 and 10 year treasuries now approaching key 4.5% threshold long duration high PE stocks like Tesla at 2024 PE of 63 getting hit the hardest today. Interest rates are going to stay higher because of sticky inflation report that we just got. Remember what I said about a year and a half ago? I said, I think inflation is going to stay around for a bit longer and interest rates, therefore, are not going to be cut as soon as many people expect. I'm definitely not happy to be right about that because high inflation is terrible for the middle class, especially. It's also not great for Tesla stock, but it lets us accumulate at lower prices for longer because eventually I believe the interest rates are going to come down. Good news for our Australian friends. Tesla has opened its first in-house collision repair center in Australia, which will of course help Tesla sell more Teslas. Tesla got a new paid advertisement of no thinking required. Model Y automatically calculates your charging needs and guides you to supercharge your locations along your route, starting at $37,500 after federal tax incentive. I think they should say that the incentive is applied immediately. You benefit from it immediately. You don't need to wait to file your tax return. Troy got a lot of flack earlier for his predictions for Q1, but he turned out to be right. In the tweet below on March 2nd, I explained why Tesla sales in Europe would be less in Q1 2024 than in Q1 last year, even though January plus February 2024 was higher than the January plus February of the previous year. Some people were not convinced at the time, but we now have the actual numbers. And yes, Troy turned out to be right. And I got some flack too for reporting what Troy thought at that time, but I know he has a good track record and I refuse to ignore highly credible predictions based on a lot of good data. And look, as an all-in Tesla stock investor in my stock portfolio, I want to know the bad news more than I want to know what the good news are today. Bad news is what really matters to me. I want to be able to argue the bad case for Tesla stock better than the bears can, because that means I don't have blind spots. And if I'm still bullish after knowing all of the bad, it actually strengthens my overall Tesla stock thesis. I think deliveries matter, yes, but autonomy, FSD, that matters so much more for Tesla. So I briefly mentioned this yesterday and I was a bit speechless when I saw this. Tesla hints Sabotra battery pack may double in size one day, says supercharging improvements are coming soon. This is all based on the Sandy Monroe Sabotra teardown. There is a significant amount of empty space inside with some suggesting there was enough space for twice the number of Tesla 4680 battery cells that could fit inside. I also saw comments saying that this is for ventilation. But then the Sabotrick lead engineer said this. He said, I would say it's half full. Now, we know that Tesla is going to offer range extenders, which will be put in the Sabotrick bed. But now it sounds like that's only going to be temporary. That's not the permanent plan that Tesla is going to execute. So when Tesla is no longer battery constrained and people are no longer lining up for the Sabotrack in massive droves. I think Tesla is then going to massively increase the range. And the Sabotrack's range could get close to 700 miles then. Plus, you could still add the range extender 
into the bed, I think, which would make the range definitely enough for towing and it would then be a true workhorse. Now, of course, the vehicle would be heavier and the handling would no longer be as sharp, but if you're using it for towing and things like that, you don't really care about the handling all that much. So I'm pretty happy with the Cybertruck right now. But because we know Tesla is battery constrained with the 4680s, the strategy that Tesla has chosen, I think for now, makes so much sense. Once you no longer have the constraint for 4680 battery production, then the double Cybertruck's range. But not before that. Tesla's Martin Vieca confirms that in 2023, Tesla sales, 90% of them were to first time Tesla customers. So that just makes that chart I showed you earlier even more impressive. That's a massive hidden catalyst that is like a time bomb which will explode on Tesla bears. People must really hate the CEO of Toyota Stuiz. Almost half of them are abandoning the brand out of outrage. If you want to see a chart that shows Tesla's brand damage, <laughs> here it is. Now, in all seriousness, this only shows what's happening with existing customers. But if you have never been a customer, I think there, there has been some brand damage. I know of one person who actually really likes the Tesla vehicles, but he told me my friends and people that know me, some of them are going to be very critical of my decision. So he's actually hesitating about purchasing a Tesla vehicle. But he tried V12 FSD and now he is not so sure. It seems like he might end up buying a Tesla anyway. Oh, did you know that ARK Invest now has more Tesla shares than at any moment before June 6th of last year? You can say a lot of things about Kathy Wood and ARK Invest, but you cannot deny that they are extremely bullish on Tesla and they manage a lot of money. She definitely has some impact on the Tesla stock price. And not just in the short term, but in the long term too, because her price targets are five year Tesla stock price targets. Tesla's Rohan Patel made a bullish comment. Do you think Tesla will have the data to prove that FSD is overwhelmingly safer than human drivers? I think they will get there, yes and we won't be shy. I think getting regulatory approvals is not going to be exactly easy, but some jurisdictions will be much faster than others. So therefore, I don't think it will be a major hurdle for Tesla really in the long term. In the short term, sure, we're going to have some issues, but in the long term, I really don't think so. Maybe you are going to have some issues with robot taxis in certain jurisdictions, but having people not using FSD in their own vehicles for personal use? I don't think you're gonna ban that. And I totally agree with Omar here. Autonomy is essential to achieving Tesla's mission. Higher utilization is the only way to move most transport to zero emissions vehicles in a reasonable time frame. Okay, maybe I don't agree fully, but what I thought he was going to say was that robot taxis overall produce less emissions because with your own robot taxi you can serve many people but with one personally owned car it's just one family or one person instead of multiple people from all over the place in other words you will need less vehicles overall in the whole world theoretically but because getting around is going to get cheaper and getting a robot taxi drive is going to be uh, cheaper than owning your own vehicle i think the demand for getting to places is going to go up so will we really end up with less vehicles in the world i'm not so sure about that you will definitely have less demand for buses and public transportation and right now sometimes you know i have thoughts oh maybe i want to go downtown or i want to go to stanley park here in vancouver but it's such a drive to get there especially if it's around rush hour that i'm like eh not today maybe tomorrow tomorrow comes eh maybe tomorrow tomorrow comes again Eh, next week. But if I could get into a robot taxi and I could do my work in the vehicle, okay, I'm going. Someone said the narrative must shift to banning level zero. Vehicles solely driven by humans without autonomous driving support cause more death. Tesla's Rohan Patel says, well said, regulators around the world should be setting the bar higher for vehicles with no advanced safety systems. There is instead a tendency to create artificial blockers to progress either because of media inflated anecdotes or protectionism 
of incumbent industry. Oh, check this out. I've been using FSD in 100% of my drives with only interventions being some accelerator taps, especially to eliminate slow creeping. Yeah, that's pretty much the only uh, major issue that I constantly adjust for. I have never had to disengage when driving this way and it makes the overall experience extremely relaxing. I would encourage anyone who doesn't like some of the mistakes or awkwardness of FSD to try doing this. Of course you can just let FSD do its own thing too and I enjoy doing this from time to time just to see the progress and decision making but this experience can be a bit more frustrating and or nerve-wracking if you aren't sure what it might do but overall please make sure to monitor and be ready to take over at any moment i am extremely optimistic about how good fsd will be but it is not perfect yet and yesterday i drove to my gym uh my shoulder is still hurt so i have been sticking to leg days for the last three months only a leg day after leg day anyway i drove to the gym yesterday on fsd it's about 11 minutes back and forth and I did it on FSD and I only had, uh, I think maybe two accelerator taps. One was with a stop sign and the other one uh, was, there was a big truck on the right side and I knew FSD could handle going into the correct lane. My lane was blocked. Maybe if I went for another 10 seconds, the vehicle would have been forced to change the lane. I didn't want to push it, so I just tapped on the accelerator pedal. I'm sure it would have handled fine, but I did it anyway. So two accelerator presses. I don't think any of those were needed for safety. And other than that, no interventions. Now coming back, pretty much the, the exact same thing, except there was this one intersection where uh, the traffic lights were out. So you had people controlling the traffic and it went through it fine. But all of a sudden this warning was sounded by the tesla vehicle i don't know why there was no imminent danger or anything like that no disengagement was required it was doing great so i just took over and that was a disengagement overall fsd keeps impressing me and by the way this drive includes zero highway so just all city driving and i went through multiple construction zones too gary posted a really popular post what happens after the 30-day trials and for the people in North America that just got their FSD, let's assume a 10% renewal rate at $200 a month. That implies 2 million times 10%. We do some math and we get 11 cents per share. If the renewal rate is 20%, that's 22 cents per share. At a 60 PE, that's $13 per share increase in the Tesla stock price, assuming it's not discounted in Tesla stock today. But this math misses one key component, which is sort of what I learned uh, after going to Math Olympics multiple times. The numbers don't really tell you the whole story. It just tells you the surface story. What happens when FSD keeps getting better and better and better and better and better and better? And, better? and these people start talking and telling their friends, look, my car can drive me to work and back without any interventions you want to see, come with me. And then that friend sees the whole thing and is speechless and goes back uh, to home, to his computer, pulls up tesla.com, places an order, and now he's a new Tesla customer with FSD. Suddenly, deliveries start to soar. Tesla stock sentiment turns around and the stock rallies. But it's difficult to put that in a spreadsheet. Oh, and Bradford actually thinks very similarly. Remember this Albuquerque auction? Well, the car has now been sold at 262,000. There's definitely a lot of demand for the software. There is no denying that. We got some more FSD data uh, today. Five destinations, about 32 kilometers. No takeovers. Coverage was basically 99%. Cumulatively, over seven days, a total of 370 eight kilometers driven to 37 destinations with a coverage of 99.8 percent on fsd is what i assume that means and a total of four takeovers an average of 1.05 takeovers per 100 kilometers i assume he is in canada that's why it's kilometers but it's 62 miles so that's pretty good remember i said that sometimes on fsd i don't feel fully comfortable because it gets a bit close to the curbs well uh, it turns out my fear is justified. Uh, this is what happened on FSD. Hopefully this is improved on V12.4. To me, this doesn't happen occasionally. To me, that discomfort rarely occurs, but uh, maybe if I do a one hour drive in the city, 
I'll feel that it's a bit too close to the curb for maybe two to three minutes out of the one hour. But in my case, it never actually hit the curb. Norway currently is going through something that every single country on this planet is going to go through. New figures suggest that the number of battery EVs on Norway's roads are soon set to overtake petrol cars. In just a matter of time, Cruise is coming back. It just relaunched in Phoenix with manual driving operations. Ford just released a new Mustang Mike-E. The longest range trim now gets 320 miles. And while the fastest Mike-E will now go from 0 to 60 in 3.3 seconds instead of 3.8 seconds. That 0.2 seconds faster than the Model Y performance. The battery can now charge from 10 to 80 percent in 36 minutes instead of 45. I tried the Ford Mike E before, I don't know, the moment I got into it because I arrived in a Tesla. It just felt a bit outdated. It's not a bad car. It's decent. I mean, if you come from a gasoline-powered Ford and you come into the Ford Mike E, you you will think it's great. But you come from a Tesla and it's a downgrade. And very few people buy the performance version, even when they buy a Tesla. So the Ford Mike E being a little bit faster, I don't think that matters much. And we know that Tesla is going to release a new Model Y and the performance version of that new refresh Model Y, I expect that one to be faster. And here's a breakdown of each trim. These two got their ranges increased by 20 miles and this one by 10 miles. Well, Ross Gerber is doing something that many would not exactly expect Ross to do anymore because he's been bashing Tesla and Elon Musk, but here he is actually promoting Tesla. He's telling people people to buy Teslas. Did we just get proof that Tesla is indeed about to enter the market in India? Tesla registered office in Pune just got furnished recently. Tesla has also imported their cars and got them registered in the state of Karnataka. You can see in the picture, I feel Tesla Indian news could be coming soon. Indeed, if this is true, yes. We now know how many vehicles Toyota sold in 2023 and it's 11.2 million. So I expect Tesla one day to sell at least that many because Tesla has better loyalty, the vehicles are better, safer, more reliable, faster, better value for money, not to mention software and FSD and Toyota. If Toyota is smart, eventually it will license FSD from Tesla. Many people are convinced they should buy a hybrid first as a gateway to an eventual EV purchase. So Toyota's hybrid strategy will work for a while, but eventually them dragging their feet for years on BEV development will come back to buy them. I agree. People don't need a gateway to EVs. You can easily live with an EV as your daily driver, as long as you can easily charge at home. Oh, but what if I live in an apartment? Well, this is how parking is going to look in the future. Norway has already figured it out. Most of their new car sales are all electric. And check this out. Sales of Volkswagen electric cars fell by 24% in Europe in Q1 and 3% worldwide. They also have the benefit of not having a very high percentage of their total sales being EV, meaning they have this huge customer base that they can market to and easily sell EVs to. And yet they are saying no. We don't want your EV. It's easier to grow EV sales when your sales overall are low. But the Tesla sales, the sales are higher already. So it's harder to grow that high number even higher fast. That's it for Tesla news, but I have a few more things to say. The Tate brothers just held an emergency meeting and I uh, commented on it. I had about uh, 40 minutes or so of commentary here. I also talked about mortgages and a bit about money. So if you're interested in that sort of stuff, but you don't want to watch them, you can just skip to my uh, commentary. And like I mentioned before, I want to cover a few controversial topics and covering this does put me in a bit of a dangerous spot in terms of my chances of being canceled definitely uh, have gone up. But I have two brothers who are 14 years old. They are twins and they asked me about Andrew Tate and I didn't really quite know what to tell them about these guys so i i've been watching them a little bit and i'm forming my opinion i'm not endorsing them by the way i make i made that very clear and i disagree with many things that they said and you can watch my commentary if you would like to and there are some things where i go yeah that i think i think that makes sense but i told my younger brothers if you want to watch these guys watch my commentary also so that you don't get confused with when they exaggerate 
on purpose and th when they actually mean what they say. Anyway, I'm going to continue my independent investigation into our Tate brothers innocent or guilty, but the law says innocent until proven guilty, so for now I'm taking that position. There are also many other news stories that I want to cover and later on I will start covering them, but maybe not yet, but in the future, absolutely. I think our world lacks common sense. And I get really upset when people do something ridiculously crazy and they somehow make it out to be normal. No, I'm, uh, I'm getting to a point where I had enough. I'm getting there. There are some things that I know I sh I, I, it's better to keep your mouth shut, but I'm getting to a point where I don't think that I can just ignore what's happening around us and then say nothing. So common sense is what I want to fight for. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.